morning guys packing up do you guys want to see the most expensive camping site I've stayed at since I've been in Japan I've been in uh, nice little cabins I've been in places with showers that you can pay for I've been alongside the beach I've been in just amazing countryside you see that like beautiful blue janky ass fence half sand half grass crab grass these weird tape marks that are breaking up areas little shack that I don't even know what that shacks for this is the bathroom and sink area and then there's this covered area which I came in late it was dark already so I didn't get to I don't even know what's going on in that place but I came here and set up a tent and uh, spent the night I should have gotten out of here half hour earlier I would have not had these guys come up to me but they came up to me and they said in Japanese uh, you need to pay I said okay how much now this area anywhere else in Japan 300 to 500 yen about five bucks basically four four or five bucks it is 1,500 yen for this for this craggy crabgrass piece of land <laughs> for for eight hours of time during the blackest night it just seems messed up anyways I'm headed towards uh, Tokyo today I I'm gonna take two more days to get there tomorrow night tonight I'm gonna spend a night at a campsite and uh, <laughs> I can't believe I gave that guy 1,500 yen for this I sent a message to him I said I said you know I says I have never seen a place so ugly so expensive I'm sorry but it's true a little sour taste in my mouth this morning let's go Tokyo is going to be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm riding through this little uh, oceanside road and <clears throat> lots of uh, happy faces and waves and whatnot. It's good, I need it. Cancel out that shit ass uh, campsite I stayed at. But I feel like uh, once I get really into the city, oh, the energy is just going to go through the roof. I got to make sure to contact some magazines and stuff to utilize all this positive energy. Where am I? Where am I? I think I am in Oarai. Oarai. O A R A I. Does this place have some sort of anime significance? Because there is anime posters everywhere. And they're like faded, like they've been up for a long time. I don't know if there was like a conference here or maybe this is a city that is the subject of one of the one of the episodes everywhere there's little posters talking about characters in this anime series interesting
we might be getting closer to the urban center of Japan but I'm still winding through pretty rural areas this is a really beautiful little farm I'm not sure what they're growing but it is harvest time and whatever it is they're pulling it up originally when I designed this tour like way way back I did not intend to be in Japan uh, anywhere close to fall I was like oh by the time October comes I'll just be starting to wind through China back into Vietnam my short-sightedness and lack of appropriate pacing information has allowed me to ride through Japan during a interesting period of time and I'll tell you what it's not as cold as I would have thought and as long as I can get out of here into Taiwan uh, around November I think it'll be okay changing colors is nice and I'm told that I'll see that beautiful change of colors in the trees as I cycle downward it'll just kind of wash over me like a wave so that should be nice it's definitely gonna make some nice drone footage turned into a longy stop <laughs> I, sat, I sat down and I was checking messages on my phone and then I bought some snacks and then I brought a drink and then I sat down in that little area where they offer you a chance to sit down and there was free Wi-Fi so I jumped on Wi-Fi and whoo chewed up about an hour anyways back on the road I have no excuses to take a break again <laughs> but the good thing is that it's a short day anyways and uh, I'm about 26 kilometers into it already so it's okay I'll finish up pretty soon anyways See that guy? He's everywhere. And he tricks me. From far enough away, I can't tell if it's a person or a sign. There was a couple that were like, like right over fences, like it was a, uh, his, his shoulders up. And I'm like, oh, okay, there's somebody looking at me. And so I get the camera out, because I'm always kind of prepared for interactions with people. The camera out. I get closer and about 10 meters away, I realize it's a sign. It's just a sign. So goofy. And I feel like a total idiot, you know? Three times today. That praying mantis sat on my trike for, I don't know, good, good few, few kilometers, maybe five kilometers. But I had to let him off. He was getting too investigatory in my rear tire. He was just hanging out on my panniers. And then, I felt, I felt like such a, like a good guy, helping this little bug out, doing my part for nature. <laughs> and I left, and not, not two minutes afterwards, I was rolling down, and I see this leaf, and it goes under my tire, and it just pops. And I'm like, I look behind, and it was a praying mantis. I ran over him. And he was trying to eat like a, a little piece of fruit or something. And he was, his, his front half was still alive and he was <laughs> still trying to, trying to claw at this fruit. Meanwhile, I had, I had smashed his ass. Literally his ass was smashed. 
<sighs> it's a balancing act. These people are so nice. Waving at me and smiling and excited. It's cool. Anyways, keep it on, keep it on. Hello. Hello. Okay, I am showered and uh, relaxed. I've checked into the hotel and now I'm headed to a Starbucks, like there's a mall. I'm gonna eat some food, sit down at the Starbucks, open my laptop, and I have committed myself to publishing two videos today. Gots to. I gots to, I says. <laughs> Anyways, that's the mission. All I need